Hi, I'm Nino. And I'm Dawn. Welcome to Foxtrot One. So what is Foxtrot? Foxtrot is one of my favorite dances. It's a very useful dance. I always say when somebody walks into the studio and they ask, what dances should I learn? Foxtrot is definitely one of the ones you want to add to your repertoire. I always think if James Bond knows how to partner dance, he definitely knows how to Foxtrot. What kind of music can you dance Foxtrot to? Actually, it's very versatile and very useful for galas and weddings. Artists such as Frank Sinatra, Harry Connick Jr., Michael Buble, if you have any of their albums, perfect to put on and dance a little Foxtrot to. So let's talk about timing in Foxtrot. You're going to hear us count slows and quicks. You're going to hear those terms a lot. Slow is the equivalent of two beats. A quick is equivalent to one beat. We have eight count rhythms and six count rhythms in Foxtrot. So some patterns are going to be slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick, and some will be slow, slow, quick, quick. Don't let that confuse you. Just when you're learning the pattern, follow along with the count that I'm mentioning, and anytime you hear me say slow or quick, that's a weight change. This is the box step, the leader's part. Forward, brush, side, together, back, brush, side, together. The rhythm's gonna be slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick. So it's an eight count pattern. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're going to be stepping back slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick. Something to keep in mind, both for the leader and the follower, is that when you do your side together, make sure you change weight. Every time you take a step forward or back, it's your outside foot. So when I go forward, it's my left, and when I go back, it's my right. Sometimes students struggle because they'll go forward, side, and not change weight, ending up going with the wrong foot. So make sure you go step, side together, back, side together, or think of it as step, change weight, back, change weight. Okay, so applying the box step to partners, I recommend first start just facing your partner and offer your hands out. We'll talk about frame in a little bit, but let's just get used to dancing together. The followers are starting with their right foot back. Leaders are starting with their left foot forward. We start with a slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick. That's one complete box. So notice leaders are going forward, brush, side together, back, brush, side together. And that complements the follower who's going back, brush, side together, forward, brush, side together. Now, in closed position, same pattern. We'll demonstrate it first. Slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick. To talk a little bit about frame, the follower brings her arms up. She wants to make sure that she keeps her elbows in front of her body, not parallel to the floor, but just below the elbow, her shoulders, and that she reaches out with her arms. Leaders, you're going to take your right arm and you're going to put it behind her. And I take my hand right underneath, right by her shoulder blade, underneath her arm. Followers, I'm making sure I'm keeping my shoulder blades back, and I'm very gently resting my hand on top of his arm. Now, where she puts her hand is really um, depends on your height. So sometimes a lot of followers reach up, and that's okay if she's got long arms or he's not too tall. But notice what that does to her. So I want to make sure that she keeps her that shoulder, she keeps her posture, and her shoulders back and down. So if she only can reach this far, that's fine. That's totally fine. With the left hand. Leaders, I usually think, put that hand at about her chin to nose height. So you don't want to make her dance too tall or too short. About chin height. And it's about halfway between you and her. And notice the positioning of the hands. We're going to start rotating soon, so we might as well start a little offset. So I line myself up so my buttons are lined up with the right side of her body. So from this angle, instead of being perfectly square, I'm slightly offset. So our right sides are overlapping but yet our shoulders are still parallel. So you still want the shoulders to be parallel. Now applying this to the box step. Slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick. Now the second pattern officially is the turning box. Slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick. On our forward step, we toe out. So as I'm stepping straight forward, I think of stepping straight forward, but as I toe out, that makes me rotate. Then I take my step to the side, bring my feet together, make sure you change weight. As your right foot goes back, toe in. 
So you'll be towing in and then side together. So if I start facing this wall and Dawn faces the camera, on our first step, as we step, we do leaders, we tow out while the followers tow in. That's about an eighth of a turn. We continue with the side together. If we do it correctly, we should be facing quarter turn to your left. First half of the box step is slow, quick, quick. And then the second half of the box step is slow, quick, quick. Notice one complete box gets us halfway around. All the way through, slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick. So the next step is the corner step. I'm going to show you the footwork without any turn first, just to get used to the weight change and the rhythm. And then we're going to actually add the rotation that makes the step, the corner step. I'm going to start the leaders part. Dawn is going to do the father's part, but you're not going to see her through me. We're going to start leaders. I want you to go with your left foot, forward, brush, back, brush, side, together. The rhythm is going to be slow, slow, quick, quick. If you notice, that's a different rhythm than the box. The box step is eight counts. Slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick. Whereas this is slow, slow, quick, quick. We'll explain a little bit more later in the video about what the difference is. But for now, just you realize that that's a different rhythm. Followers, we're going back on our right foot. We're taking our slow, coming forward slow, and quick, quick. So with the right foot, we're going back brush, forward brush, together. Now, that's something to practice. Practice those individually without any rotation first. The followers just doing what Don did and the leaders doing what I did. Once you get comfortable with that, we actually add rotation. So the leaders, now what you're going to do is your forward is still the same, slow. But as you're going back, you want to go straight back, but toe in. So as I toe in and then take my side together. So that's what gives me a quarter rotation. Don't confuse it with the box because the box has a side step. This does not have a side step after the first slow. After our first slow, we go straight back, side together. Now, that straight back is towing in, so it cuts the corner. I think of it as like you're backing out of a driveway. When you back out of a driveway, you first go back and then you cut the wheel, as opposed to taking your first step and then stepping to the side. You're going to run over your neighbor's bushes. So you want to make sure that your slow brush, back, towing in, and then side together. If you do it correctly, you kind of stay on that balance beam. You move a little bit out of the way, but it's a nice thick balance beam. If you did it again, slow, slow, quick, quick. If you do it four times in a row, you'll end up back where you started. Followers, we're doing the same thing, but the natural opposite. Back brush, we're rotating, towing out, Forward brush and then side together. From this direction, slow, slow, quick, quick. Slow, slow, quick, quick. This direction, slow, slow, quick, quick, slow, slow, quick, quick. Behind, slow, slow, quick, quick. Now that you've learned those three patterns, let's put them together and dance before we move on. So put on some music and just practice mixing the three patterns up. We'll demonstrate for you. You have a box step, you have a turning box, and you have a corner step. It's really good to practice the difference between the box step, either one, and the corner step, because that lead is a very, very valuable and tricky one. So, as I step forward and I want to go back, I need to let her feel that straight back action, no side. As long as I have a tone frame, not tense, but not noodly, but I have some tone in my arms and she's responding as well. So followers, you have to match that tone. Doesn't mean like you're fighting each other, but you just have that light resistance. I think of mannequins connected. So if I, if I lean forward, if I lean back, she follows that and she feels every little micro movement. If she can feel that, then leaders, you commit your weight and you commit your body momentum to where you need to go. If I'm doing the corner step, I'm going to come straight back with rotation. Whereas if I'm doing the box step, she's going to feel that movement to the side. And that's how she'll feel the difference between those two patterns. Put that in a various amalgamation, try it to music, enjoy that for a little bit, and then come back and continue on with the rest.
Okay, now that you know the patterns, let's spend a little bit of time on good technique and specifically frame and connection. Both of you put your hands out, just like you're playing patty cake or giving each other a double high five. And what you're going to do is you're just going to hold a nice tone frame, not tense, um, but just enough tone. Don't think of your muscles tensing, think of your joints. Think of freezing your joints. So now, if I just keep my arms static, and so does she, what's gonna happen? If you move your body, even just an inch forward, she'll move it back. If I move it back, she'll follow with me. We can do a little circle. I can freeze and reverse that circle. You wanna move with each other, not against each other. Once you feel that's pretty successful, then you can actually apply that to your movement. So we can do a box step, and even you can do just walks. So just walk and then don't even worry about any rhythm. Don't worry about any specific pattern. Don't tell her what you're going to do. Just lead it. See if she feels it. Followers, it's important for us as well as the leaders to not let those arms fall. Do not let the leader's momentum be absorbed. We want to make sure the space that we start between us maintains the entire time. The arm lead is not something we like to do in social dancing. So notice my body's leading. One other exercise that we'll sometimes use is the genie arm. So you, you hold your arms out like a genie, and you're going to connect. And see if you can maintain that while doing the patterns. You're body leading, you're not arm leading. Then extend your arms, and then go into closed position. Then go ahead and try your pattern again. See if that helps your frame and connection out. So let's move on to our next step, and that's the forward walk. I'm going to demonstrate the leader's part, and then she'll demonstrate the followers. You're going to go slow, slow, and then a side together. All right, so it's a six count pattern, two slows, two quicks. Notice I do brush my feet, but I keep moving, so I don't stop as I take my step, brush, step, brush, side together. Make sure you change your weight, your left foot's free. You could do it again if you needed to. Followers are part. We're doing the natural opposite. And upwards, back slow, slow, side together. Slow, slow, quick, quick. Close position, same hold. And as we take our slow, slow, quick, quick, you can do it multiple times. And remember, don't pause in between. When a pattern ends, you want to keep going. Otherwise, it looks a little choppy. So we'll do two patterns in a row. Slow, slow, quick, quick, slow, slow, quick, quick. And all the patterns that you're learning in this module, um, they're relatively compact. It's great for a small room, a living room, your kitchen, or a ballroom. But this one travels, so if you were to continue to do it, it's a great one to do in a bigger ballroom. And usually people will travel around the line of dance, which is counterclockwise. Because it staggers, we usually angle. So you wouldn't go straight down the line of dance, you'd be a little bit at an angle. So what ends up happening is putting those two together always kind of resets you. All right, so this is our next step, and it's the promenade. I'm going to demonstrate the leader's part, backing you, and then Dawn will demonstrate the follower's part. Our left foot leaders are going to take a step to the side. Then you're going to take your right foot and cross over, and then close it up with the side together. So I start parallel to the wall, or my partner. But as I take my first step, I open up just a little bit, about an eighth, no more than an eighth of a, ro a rotation. Then I take my right foot, cross over, still in promenade position, and then I go back to parallel the wall in a quick break. The rhythm, one last time, is going to be slow, slow, quick, quick. We're going to open up, starting with our right foot, walking slow, crossing slow, and then side together. We're going to take that slow, slow, quick, quick. Okay, so now we're going to demonstrate the promenade together. We start in closed position, but as we take that first step, we end up slightly opening up. So if you notice, our shoulders start in parallel, but as soon as we take that step, our shoulders open up. I kind of think of it as this is an equal sign, and now we're greater than. So the shoulders angle out. On the slow, we're in promenade, and then on the cross, we're still in promenade, but then we close it up. So right. facing this direction, together it's going to be slow, slow, quick, quick. Slow, slow, quick, quick, slow, slow, quick, quick. All right, and one more time, facing this way so you can dance with us towards the TV. We take our slow, slow, quick, quick. Now is a good time in the video for you to amalgamate some of the patterns. So you have your box step, your turning box, your corner step, your forward walk, and a promenade. That's five patterns that you know already. See if you can amalgamate them all. We did an amalgamation earlier of the first three, but let's just amalgamate a couple here. So we're going to start with a uh, forward walk and we're going to angle it a little bit. So we go slow, slow, 
quick, quick, promenade, slow, quick, quick. Then we can do our turning box, and that'll help us get around. And then we can do a promenade, right? Add a forward walk. So adding those to maneuver around your living room floor or the ballroom. If you need something to something kind of prescribed to keep it easy, why don't we just do a forward walk, a turning box, remember to finish the turning box, and then do a promenade. And then repeat. And now you have a nice elegant box chop to dance around your living room. Our next step is a promenade with a turn. There's several different turns that come out of a promenade. The first one we usually teach is a little bit different than what other Foxtrot teachers use, but I find this one's easier and it's a little bit more fun and lively. So leaders, you're just doing two promenades and leading her to turn on the quick, quick. Slow, slow, quick, quick, slow, slow, quick, quick. Slow, slow, quick, quick, slow, slow, quick, quick. Followers, the leaders have the same footwork, but our footwork is different because we're doing the turning. We're taking our normal slow, slow. Leader's going to raise the hand. We're going to turn going forward, quick. Half turn, quick. And we're going to land slow, slow. And then back to the side to that. Slow, slow, quick, quick, slow, slow, quick. Leaders, I'm going to demonstrate at what point you raise your hand and how do you do it. We're going to do it this way so you can dance with us. So we start at close, take our first slow leader and promenade, then cross. As soon as you're done with that cross, you're going to release this right hand, raise your left, let her turn, and then pick her up as you're taking your next slow, slow. It's not uh, an active turn. You're not actually doing any kind of cranking or anything. I raise the hand and give her an invitation to go underneath. So as we go slow, Slow, invite her to go underneath, lower the hand, pick her up, and you're back to close. Even though she's turning and you're going to be amazed, you're going to want to watch her, keep your feet moving. You're doing two promenades in a row. So followers, talking about little details for the arms and helping out the leader. We take our slow, 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 slow. As soon as the leader raises the hand, my left hand has to come across as I turn quick, quick. And then I'm going to leave this hand out. Will the leader pick me back up on the slow, slow, and then quick, quick, I go back to my left. Uh, bonus move, a dip. So this is a pattern that we usually don't teach in our regular classes until Foxtrot 3. But because this is a video, we figured we'd throw this in. So it's just a simple dip. You could use it in every dance, but it's very nice in Foxtrot. We just take a step to the side, over-rotate her a little bit, and then come right back up. You can do that off of any pattern. So let's say you're doing your box step. Once again, make sure you finish the box step. Then you take an extra side and do the dip. Facing this wall, face me. You're going to take a step to the side, and then you're going to rotate your body just about an eighth of a turn. And then you're going to extend your right arm. So a couple things to keep in mind. You're not bending over. So once again, you're closed position. You'll step to the side, rotate, and then extend the arm. Most of my weight is on my left foot. I have about 95%, and then just using my right foot as a kickstand. I push off of this leg, coming back to my right foot, ready to take my next step. As I do this, when I take my step to the side, I want to bring the follower closer to me. So as she's stepping, you're partially bringing her close to you and partially stepping towards her. So it's not a perfect side step. There's a little bit of a forward action. And part of that is a little bit of a wind up and then rotate to the left. So I wind up to the right and then I rotate to the left, extend my right arm, push off, prepare for the next pattern. First things first. Never assume a dip, never throw yourself into a dip, and don't dip on a crowded dance floor, leaders. Okay. Followers footwork. We're going to take a side step. We're going to rotate our toes in that direction. My right leg is the weight supported leg. I'm going to think about being an elevator and lowering. I'm going to make a nice line from the top of my head to the tip of my toe. I'm going to rotate slightly to my left and lower in. Now, as you can see, I have my own balance. It's really important in a dip that we don't drop our butt because we'll be really heavy to the leader. Followers, side step, rotating, and then I can lower. I'm using the weighted foot to push myself back up and regain my starting position. As you take your step to the side, you try to get a little closer to her. Rotate, 
Extend your arm. Keep your posture straight, leaders. And then come back up. Step, rotate, extend, come back up, and you're ready to go. There's no specific count on that dip. So usually I do it to match the music either at the end of the song or if there's some moment in the middle. So if you're doing slow, go quick, quick, slow, go quick, quick, then you dip, hold it for as long as you want, come back up, and then find the downbeat and get started again. It's really important that this is not a uh, weight supported move, but followers, it's important for you to know not to, to throw your weight. So when you do this dip, theoretically, if I was to let go and walk away, she'd be balanced, right? So it's just a pose to create a nice line. It's not that I'm supporting her. So I don't throw her into the dip. I just extend my arm and allow her to get to the position she's comfortable with. And we step side and we rotate as we lower. Remember, this left toe keeping on the ground will keep you balanced. A lot of followers want to be dramatic, they've seen too many movies, and they want to throw their leg back. So make sure followers that left foot is still staying very lightly on the ground. And leaders, you got to help out with that. So when I do this pattern, I take a too big of a step and she ends up behind me, then she's going to fall or she's going to bring that leg up. So I want to make sure that we stay overlapped overlapped, rotated, and then extend. So notice our centers are still aligned and we have that still perfect uh, balance so that way she can support her, her weight and we, she can keep her feet on the floor. We hope you enjoyed Foxtrot 1. If you want to find out about Foxtrot 2, 3, 4, or continuing on, we have levels all the way up to mastery. Just contact us through the information at the end of this video um, or possibly in the description uh, attached to this video and we'll give you the secret access to those videos so you can learn online or how you can come learn with us in person. See you soon on the virtual dance floor.